welcome to module 10. So now we deal it with the memory management perspective. One of the important thing that we need to keep in mind is that we are now looking at servers. So as this uh, course also titles is a server management. When we look at servers, there will be multiple processes that will be executing on the server and we call it as degree of multi-programming. Right? What is the degree of multi-programming? The number of processes that are simultaneously ready to be executed on the CPU. So each of these processes would be allocated some memory and uh, on the logical address space and they have to, whenever they need to execute, they need to go to the main memory and execute that the, the corresponding pages have to be moved to the main memory, should be available in the main memory and we have to start executing. So suppose I have 10 processes, then at least 10, 10 pages should be or 10 or 20 pages should be available uh, in the main memory. So each process will be occupying say one or two pages, etc. Now what would happen is that if I keep on increasing, say suppose I have 20 pages and I have 10 processes, then I can allocate two pages for them, each process. Suppose I have, now I make it 20 processes, that means I am increasing the degree of multiprogramming, then each process will get on an average only one page to execute, right. So as I keep increasing number of processes that could simultaneously exist, execute on a system, what I call as degree of multiprogramming, which I keep increasing, then the number of page faults will increase. That means then the CPU will be spending more time handling page faults rather than doing any constructive execution of the process and this state is actually called as thrashing. Right? So the nectar beyond some level actually becomes poison. So if you keep on increasing the degree of multiprogramming, somewhere there will be a hit and that hit comes in the form of what we call as thrashing here. So this is how the thing, so what we see on your left hand side is the page fault rate with the number of frames allocated, right. So there is a desired behavior of paging algorithms is to reduce page fault rate below acceptable uh, level as number of available frames increases, right. That means, so the question here is does increasing number of physical frames always reduce page fault rate? actually we have said in the previous class, uh, previous module that this is usually yes, but for some algorithms this is not guaranteed and we have said about Valadi's anomaly. What you see on the left hand side is the page fault rate and y axis is the page fault rate and x axis is the number of frames and as I keep on increasing the number of frames, you expect the page fault rate to become 0. And for different, four different algorithms like FIFO, clock, LRU, OPT, OPT is the optimal, most optimal algorithm. Uh, now we see as, as the number of frames uh, is increasing, the page fault actually decreases. But there are some algorithms where, uh, which uh, suffers from this Bellady's anomaly, where as the number of uh, frames allocated increases, your page fault can also increase. For example, it may be something like this, but then it can go up and then come down. So this is what we call as these Bellady's anomaly, right. Now with this as a background that we have seen, why paging actually works, if, if I have a program say which will spawn across say 100 pages, suppose I have a program which will spawn across say 100 pages, if I get, just give it some 20 pages still it will work fine, it will not create lot of page faults. Right? The reason is that the 80-20 rule, 80% 80 of accesses are only to 20% of pages or 90% of the program executes for 10% of the time and 10% of the program executes for 90% of the time. This is a 90-10 rule in software engineering. So that means, so 80% of the access are for only for 20% of the pages. So if those 20% is actually inside your memory, then your program will start working fast. So these 20 percent of the pages, if they are moved from the disk into memory and they are available, then it will start working very well. Now what does that 20 percent mean? If I have 100 pages, then 20 pages should be allocated for surely. But if I keep increasing the degree of multiprogramming, then what will happen is that, uh, so this is what happens. If I start increasing, I will not be in a position to give those 20 percent pages. So if I have an 100 page program and uh, I have to give 20 pages as an operating system for that to execute, 
but since there are so many processes uh, there, there is a degree of multiprogramming there, then what will happen? I will not be in a position to give you 20 percent of the wages. So then what happens? So, so I will give less than 20 percent and then so as a process I will land up with large more of page faults and so your CPU will start handling more page faults rather than constructive execution and that is why you actually see trend of decreasing in this zone. So as your degree of multiprogramming increases, your CPU utilization starts falling down. At some point it will actually become 0, the system will start hanging, right. So till that point as my degree of multiprogramming increases, you see an upward trend in the CPU utilization, but beyond some point it falls and the reason for this fall is because CPU starts handling more, the, more of page faults rather than doing constructive execution and the reason why I am getting more page faults is because for every process at least 20 percent of the most important pages should be there in memory and they are not there in memory and so these processes land up with more page faults essentially making CPU work more for the page fault rather than constructive execution. So this is where the trashing uh, starts, right and that 20 percent of the page is basically called the working set of the process. So always my working set should be in the memory. If my working set of pages, the 20 percent of the pages is called working set of pages, that working set of pages if they are not there in the memory, then you land up with trashing. So one of the ways by which a person can hack into the system is somehow if he is going to spawn more processes, if he is having a way of spawning more processes by which he could increase the degree of multiprogramming some vulnerability exists which could increase the degree of multiprogramming and these processes can be some junk processes too. But if, if he is going to get to this thing then possibly he can go and thrash the system, right. For example, even in the last before I winded up my module, the previous module I gave an example of a boot time variable of a server. So if my boot time variable actually becomes 0 in that case that means the database cannot access uh, allocate its own memory. So then the database now starts allocating uh, request the operating system to allocate memory for it and uh, so the operating system now in a, in a particular uh, server environment like that, there could be lot of processes along with database as a process. So now the operating system will also treat this database as one of those processes and so it will only allocate some amount of memory to this database, but the database actually needs lot more memory because the working set of a database server can be much larger than the working set of a normal process. Now if the operating system with this boot variable 0, if it starts looking at the database process and also the normal process in the same way, then what would happen? The database process will land up with more page faults and essentially your database performance goes down your server, uh, the entire uh, say for example your core banking you know, may go in a banking environment or your core insurance in your insurance environment, these things will start behaving very slowly. It can even thrash the system, right. For So, so this is very, very important that we need to uh, understand here. So what to do about thrashing? So when a thrashing comes, you have to go and kill some processes, but most importantly you should see that the thrashing should not recur. So thrashing just by increasing the memory, possibly thrashing cannot solve. So suppose your server st starts hanging, the immediate reaction would be that there may be a memory issue, memory based issue. Now that memory issue will never get solved by increasing the amount of memory. If some, somebody comes and says, oh you have a problem, so increase the amount of memory. It may solve or it may not solve. The problem can be much more complex than this uh, issue. So that is one thing that you, we should understand. So when there is a process that is hanging, it is not just because there is less amount of CPU or less amount of memory. It may be that there is something like thrashing that is happening inside, which by increasing the number of CPU or increasing the no amount of memory, you cannot stop it. It may be a temporary relief, but it cannot be a permanent relief. There is a problem which be much more deep rooted than that and that is what we are trying to hint through this uh, stuff. So as a prospective uh, security uh, engineer, 
you should you should keep these things in mind uh, because if you go and handle large complex data centers etc these things come extremely crucial this type of knowledge is extremely important and crucial so yeah i am just going brushing through these slides because i have explained these slides in great detail this slides basically talks about what is a working set this was uh, 1968 this was actually introduced by uh, denning so very 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 simple definition of this is set of pages that a process access during some window period of some time period t in the past okay so if if this working set could be maintained in the main memory then the page fault can basically decrease so if i have the knowledge of the working set and importantly if the working set cannot be allocated we swap out entire process and then bring it when you have enough memory to bring the working set okay so rather than keeping that process and that creating lot of page fault hindering the other processes one thing is to keep the process that has a large working set uh, away or giving it more pages that's what we told for database it has a large working set the operating system could give permission to the database process to handle its own memory so sometimes the database is becomes independent of the operating system it just needs the permission of the operating system the operating system gives a huge amount of memory database takes care of handling the memory so that is another thing so these are some of the issues that Uh, people have worked out in order to handle this working set problem so the important takeaway from this point is that if i could increase the degree of multi programming see that the working set is not in the main memory then i can basically go and you know bring the performance of the system down essentially causing what we call as the denial of service and this is one thing that you need to keep in mind as a security engineer as a takeaway from this course please again note this is not a course on operating system this is a course on information security so i am just trying to give some glimpse of operating system fundamental which could have implications in information security right thank you